Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. So this week we are going to be creating some vectorized watercolor textures. And you might be wondering why would you ever need vectorized watercolor textures? And the reason is when you scan in your watercolor textures, you're really limited to the resolution of the texture, meaning how big you can put it on something by the resolution of your scanner. And if you don't take it to a professional scanning place, you could be very limited where you couldn't even make a poster using those textures because the resolution wasn't scanned high enough. So vectorizing, you're, you're taking pixels, which cannot be infinitely rescaled, and you're converting them to points. And points can be infinitely rescaled, so you can make it as large as you want, and you never lose the crispness of that texture. So this could be really useful if you're putting this on a billboard, maybe some signage, maybe a poster. So I'm just gonna show you my personal technique of doing this. Obviously everyone's got their own way of doing it, um, but this week I wanna share how I do it and things that I look for depending on what the texture looks like. So I'm gonna give you a few quick tips and I'm gonna do this with two different textures because they both behave a little bit differently. That way you can be aware of some things you might run into when you're vectorizing your own textures. So like I do with every tutorial, I'm gonna show you what the end product looks like first and then I'll take you through the steps to get there. So as you're looking on my screen right now, you see two textures that look very similar. One of them is vectorized and the other is not. And can you tell which one is and which one isn't? Um, so I'm gonna zoom in and you'll be able to tell right away. So this one up here is the scanned in image. And if I get really, really close, you can see it starts getting blurry, um, which is because it's pixel based. So if I zoom out and then I come down to the vectorized version of it and I come in, you can see it's made up of all different little shapes. So that's the main difference between a raster or pixel-based image versus a vector or point-based image. So I'm gonna also show you, here's the second one that we're gonna be creating. So this one up here was the scanned in texture and I can get super close. And then here is the vectorized version. You can see it's made up of all these little shapes, but it fools you because when you're zoomed out, you really can't tell the difference between the two. So both of these textures come from kits um, that you can pick up if you're interested. I'm gonna show you those kits really quick. This is the original uh, watercolor texture kit and all of these were scanned in at a high resolution. So these are all 300 PPI. So if you ever wanted to vectorize any of these, they're perfectly set up and ready to go. If you've purchased these before and you'd like to vectorize them, you'll be able to do it no problem at all. So the ones that we're gonna be using uh, from this original kit uh, is this one right here, this number four circle, circular texture. And then the second texture that we're gonna use is coming from the second watercolor texture kit. And these ones are a little softer, so there is some white in here, which is something that I wanna point out when we're working with this one. And this one is number six within this kit, the abstract soft watercolor textures. Okay, so we're gonna hop back into Illustrator. So this first one, I'm gonna get rid of what I had done before. So I'm just gonna delete this and I'm gonna make a copy of this so we can compare it at the end. All right, so we the first thing we need to do in order to vectorize this is you need to live trace it, but we're gonna put in some custom settings uh, because live trace by default, it can be a little finicky and sometimes your results might not be what you're looking for. So I'm just gonna come up here. I'm in CS6 for this, so in order, um, how I usually do it is I just come over here to the image trace and then I choose high fidelity photo and hit OK. And this usually takes a bit of time. My computer is pretty fast, but it still takes a little while because obviously it's a very detailed texture and it needs to take all those little bits of the texture and create little itty bitty shapes out of them. So this is just going to finish up. And now you can see it's pretty similar to the original, but there's a few things we can do. If we're happy with this, we could expand it and then save it and then we'd be done. But if you wanna get it even more detail, I'm gonna hit this little icon over here for my panel and I'm gonna throw in some custom settings. If you don't see all of this, uh, just toggle down this little arrow near advanced and you can get to some more options. Okay, so the things to pay attention to here are the number of colors the number of paths and the number of anchors. Generally, the higher your number of colors, 
the higher your number of paths and anchors, the higher your file size. And file sizes can get pretty out of control depending on how um, how textured your, how detailed your texture really is. So right here, I would say this is probably a pretty good stopping point for this one. If you wanna get a little more detailed, I would up your color count. I would not up your path count um, because you can do a few really quick fixes and I'll explain those in just a minute of how you can correct um, the fact that you don't have as many paths. Paths just kind of close up any loose gaps and make sure that it's a solid texture and your anchor points will increase with the number of colors and the number of paths. So this kind of increases by default. So I'm gonna just up my colors to maybe 95 and it should, it's gonna adjust right now. So um, I'm just gonna fast forward this and then we'll come back. Okay, so there was a very, very subtle change that I'm not sure if you noticed it, but there was a very subtle change in this. So. I mean, it's really personal taste uh, for the application that you're working with, if you really think someone would notice it or not, or if it's worth having the larger file size to be working with. And by larger file size, I'm, I'm talking like, this is on 11 by eight and a half right here, and this would probably be about a 15, 10 to 15 megabit um, file. So just a heads up on that. So once you're happy with this, um, Notice right here that there's no option to ignore the white because some of these textures do have white in them and you don't want to delete that out of here. So when you're happy with this, all you're going to do is hit expand. And once you expand it, you can see there's a ton of anchor points in here. All these little blue dots are anchor points. So that that's why your files can get big. So once you expand it, just hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G if you're on a PC to ungroup everything. And we're just going to remove, whoops, we're just gonna remove this outer box right here. So I'm just gonna select it and then delete it. Let me remove that panel. Okay, so we're almost there. So what I like to do, um, as I mentioned before, don't increase your paths too much. And when you don't increase your paths, you end up with gaps occasionally right here. And these would be eliminated if you did increase your paths. Um, just remember that increases your file size. But if you have time, um, you can go in here and I just hit A on my keyboard to grab my direct select tool. I select the shape that's near this gap and then I hit N on my keyboard and with my mouse, this is grabbing my pencil tool, I just close that off. Um, these little guys, I mean, it really depends on how large your texture is gonna be on whatever application it is with whether or not someone would even see something that's that tiny. So you really need to make your own judgment call there. But this will save you um, um, some file size if you have the time to go in here and kind of remove some of these larger white areas. I'm just selecting it with my direct select tool. I hit A on my keyboard. I selected the shape. Then I hit N on my keyboard. And now with my mouse, I'm just going to connect that path to close off the white areas. So you can go through your texture. So you can't even tell where they are when you're zoomed out. So really just make that call. So the last thing I do, and this is kind of like my my last little test to make sure that this is a good usable texture is sometimes these textures are placed on different colored backgrounds. So when I was vectorizing this, I was using the PNG files that are within those kits. So every texture that I provide um, comes as a transparent PNG and also a high res JPEG. So I'm using those transparent PNGs to vectorize. That way it gets rid of any type of background texture or color. And I'm already set to go when I decide to vectorize. So I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard and I'm just going to create this big square around it. And then I'm gonna change this color to black and then I'm gonna send it to back. You can right click, arrange, send it back. And this just lets me see that there's no like weird white areas around the outside. And this one actually came out really, really good. Um, sometimes you'll have little pieces of, little flecks of white around the outside. So I would say this one's ready to go, ready to save. And if you wanna compare it to the original, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So now we're gonna hop over to this abstract texture. I'm gonna get rid of this original one that I created. I'm gonna show you a few things that you might run into that are different on this one because of the nature of the color versus the other more saturated, darker color uh, texture that we just looked at. So I'm gonna make a copy of this and then we're gonna go right back to where we were before under image trace. I'm gonna select high fidelity photo and hit okay. And I'll be back right in a second once this is done. Okay, so 
you can see this is what the default settings look like when you compare what we just vectorized to the original and you can see they're they're pretty close if you want to get a little more detailed once again i would just come over here to the panel where your options are add a few more colors maybe up your paths very very slightly i would be very cautious with your paths um, but yeah so i i could up my colors to maybe um, 95 percent again and then uh, let it work its magic okay so we had a slight improvement and if at any time you want to just zoom in here and see how things are looking by all means you can see i've already got a little white area that i'm going to have to fill in later there's a couple of extras but it's not it's not overwhelming it's nothing that i can't go in and manually fix um, just to keep my file size down a little bit so when you're happy with your results just come up here once again hit expand this will create all those anchor points um, close the panel ungroup command shift g or control shift g on a pc and then select this outer white area um, so here's another little tr trick if you've got any little stragglers that you can't see i always go into outline mode just to make sure i don't have little bits floating around the outside so if you hit command y or control y on a pc you can see um, kind of zoom in a little bit sometimes there's a little piece here or there like you can see down here i've got a little piece i'm just hitting a on my keyboard for my direct select tool and i can just click one of those points and then just hit delete a couple of times and it'll get rid of it so you can kind of look around the edges and see if you've got any stragglers hanging out and when you're happy with everything go back into your regular mode command y or control y once again okay so we're just gonna zoom in here let's close up some of these gaps once again you can grab any shape that's near the little gap that you want to fill in so just hit a on your keyboard for your direct select tool so i'm just going to grab this shape right here hit n on your keyboard and with your mouse you can just close that area off so i would go through this whole thing and close off any other gaps that i might find especially the larger ones don't freak out and don't worry too much about the little ones because when it all comes down to it no one's ever really going to notice it if you want to be that particular by all means go ahead and fill it in but something like this people are probably never going to be able to tell okay so the last little test is making sure that it holds up on a dark background so i'm going to hit m on my keyboard and just draw a big rectangle around it change the color to black send it to back um, keyboard shortcut for that is command shift open bracket or control shift open bracket on a pc and as you can see this does not pass our little transparency test this one's got a little bit of white because it is a softer lighter um, texture so this is was this was one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, and show a different texture for so all you really have to do is just come in here and usually they're all connected and I can just delete it right away and just grab my little pieces and just go around the exterior of my texture just grabbing the white areas and doing this final bits of editing this is all pretty quick because when they're the same color they're usually um, all together and it's easy to to delete them when it's like that okay so that is how you vectorize a watercolor texture in illustrator you can see once again i'm comparing it to the original it's very very close it would be pretty difficult to tell from far away whether or not you're using a scanned image versus a vectorized image and that's exactly what we want just remember about keeping your file sizes down because the more points the more colors you have the larger your file sizes are going to get and if you don't have a very powerful computer it'll be very difficult to vectorize it and it'll be even more difficult to work with it in applications so that's our tutorial this week if you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe i release a new design tutorial every single tuesday and make sure to head on over to my blog every hyphen tuesday.com for even more tutorials and a bunch of design freebies so thanks so much for watching and i will see you next week